Howdy, how's it going? My name's Davy Chappie, and today it's time to make sweet, sugary love to the four natural forces of the material plane, because we're gonna be going over the guide to the good guy, Janassi. I'm gonna talk about the origin and the everyday livelihood of everyone's favorite 90s, 70s funk band, and I'm gonna give stats on how to play a pet rock in one of your own games. As always, keep in mind that a lot of this is just my opinion, so if you feel like I need to make like a tree and go leaf myself, feel free to play your half-baked elementals however you want. And just real quick, I wanna give a shout out to my new patrons this month. Paul Weissman! Armani Asari! Jeremiah Williams, Hiken, Shell Sabub, Daniel Devare, Devere, something like that. Samuel Soto, Lukeith, N7 Shirk, Fresliver, Alexander M. Thomas. Corey, thank you so much for being my new patrons this month. With your cash dollars and my know-how, I might be able to afford Wendy's for another week. But with that away, let's begin. Earth, water, fire, air. Long ago, the four elements boned in harmony. Then, everything changed when the material dicks attacked. Only the genie, masters of all four primordicocks, could handle the girth of the main plane. But in doing so, the elemental essence and the material musk collided to create a new type of creature, a half-human, half-primal element consciousness known as the Genasi. And thus, the way that people look at extra curvy rocks was changed forevermore. So, there are four flavors of Genasi that exist in the world, depending on which style of genie ended up showing a mortal their whole new world. And these flavors are extra chunky earth, smoking spicy fire, creamy, moist, water, and light fluffy air. The element of a particular Genasi largely contributes to both their name, i.e. fizz, aqua, rocky, wind, dough, and it also helps determine their overall personality, with fire Genasi embodying the burning, overwhelming passion of flames, water Genasi being chill, mellow, go with the flow type dudes, earth Genasi being stubborn and blunt with extremely chiseled ab, nor Normal skin, and air genasi being total floaters. In the past, there also used to be para genasi, which were genasi that could manifest two different elements to form one Franken element, such as a genasi that could manifest both earth and fire to make lava, or fire and water to make steam, but after the multiverse-wide magical apocalypse that was the Spell Plague, genasi found themselves briefly able to attune to any single element that they wanted at a given time to correlate with how, during the Spell Plague, the four elemental planes forgot what personal boundaries were and just smashed into each other to form one elemental plane suit. However, this didn't last long, and when the second Sundering came about and unretconned all of the chaos at the Spell Plague Rock, the Elemental Planes decided that they just weren't in the best place emotionally to start a relationship and decided to remain friends with benefits. In turn, the Genasi, as a reflection of the Elemental Planes, ended up getting stuck in whichever elemental form they happened to be in at the time. And the idea of a para Genasi became all but a myth, even more so than the normal Genasi are themselves. You see, in the normal world, Genasi live very tumultuous lives depending on where they ended up living. Because they're so exceedingly rare, only coming into being when a genie does to your mother what Disney did to genie, or if another genasi and something else mates, or a normal creature is hit with a master blast of pure elemental energy, the majority of the material world has no clue what to think of them, usually confusing a genasi for an elemental or maybe a construct and demanding that any accompanying wizards de-summon them or leave them at the door because their kind ain't welcome here. Alternatively, a culture might look at a man made entirely out of fire walking around in a forest and take it to mean that the forest spirits are very angry and they could either seek to appease this quote-unquote fire spirit, or if they they are a particularly violent bunch, they'll go out with pitchforks and torches to burn the fire before it can grow. The point is that humanoids are dumb and they don't know how to react to a thing that they've never seen before, so results may vary and your liquid boy may be seen as a sea god if they come wandering out of the ocean and into your sleepy port town. And it doesn't really get any better or more structured for the Genasi if it goes to their own would-be elemental home plane either. Have you ever gone to an event where everyone was supposed to dress for the occasion but you just showed up wearing that suit shirt that I know you have in your closet? Yeah, it's like that. Technically, Genasi are made of one of the four elements, but that doesn't really mean they belong there. Normal elementals will wonder what the hell this cosplaying human is doing here, and even the Genasi's phenomenal cosmic parent will just ignore it if it ever even shows up at all, as it considers the birth of a Genasi to be little more than just a byproduct of sleeping with a humanoid. And if one does find its way face to face with its progeny, it'll just think, huh, well that's weird, and go back to whatever it's doing. It's even a struggle to find a normal mortal parent who'll take a Genasi in, as like I've established before, mortals are dumb and a green baby that can just start floating around everywhere is bound to get a parent to say, uh, fuck no, and see just how far that baby can fly. But the one place that any creature, elemental or otherwise, can find a place in is in an adventuring party, and to join one of those, you're gonna need stats. Now, Genasi vary wildly with their mechanical bonuses, depending on what type of Genasi you're choosing to play as, with the only constant between all of them being a plus two to con because you cannot kill the river. After that, it all depends on your element. Air Genasi get a bonus to dex, they can hold their breath forever because they are the literal embodiment of hot morning breath, and they can cast Levitate on themselves 
themselves once per long rest, making them really just good at pretty much anything given that there are absolutely no classes that don't benefit from bonuses to both dex and con. The Earth Genasi get a bonus to strength, they can easily move through difficult terrain made out of earth or stone, and they can cast Pass Without Trace to presumably make themselves look like a statue? I really don't understand why that was the spell they got, but it does mean that you can play some of the punchier classes like a Barbarian or a Fighter, and still have a stealthy trick up your sleeve if you ever need to get out of dodge. Fire Genasi get a bonus to Intelligence, a special red dark vision that goes out to 60 feet, resistance to fire damage, and they can cast Produce Flame whenever they want, followed by Burning Hands once per long rest. While the bonus to Intelligence implies that they'll be a good wizard, I've found that Fire Genasis can work pretty much anywhere given that their abilities are just so universally versatile. Finally, the Water Genasi get a bonus to Wisdom, resistance to Acid, they can breathe both air and water, they have a swimming speed of 30 feet, and they can cast both Shape Water, and later they can cast Create or Destroy Water once per long rest. Like the Fire Genasi, Water Genasi aren't super beholden to the roles of the Cleric, Druid, or Ranger due to the powers that they get being able to benefit anybody, but it does seem like maybe Wizards of the Coast is perhaps prioritizing some Genasi stat blocks over others. But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, share, subscribe, comment, ring that bell icon. Please do not stick your dick in a campfire, and maybe support me on Patreon so that I can pay for a night with a genie of my own. But yeah, Davy out.